Hello viewers, just out for a walk with Buster today. He's got to get rid of his, uh, you know what. Picking up the shit after Buster. Uh, I'm going to talk about alcohol today and how it's affecting some of my viewers because I've had a few of them in my messenger with like serious issues just lately. Um, so let's get away from the traffic and we shall chat a bit because I care about my viewers and it seems that when any of them drop into my messenger and speak to me about these difficult things they usually seem to get a lot out of it so that tells me that everything I've been through I'm not too bad at uh, passing on a bit of the old um, experiences viewers so for instance I've just had to pick up Buster's shit put it in the bin but he's a lovely harmless doggy and, and he's a pleasure to be in my life but if you're a family person and your drinking has got out of control to the point where you're just a liability both to yourself and to your family basically they're picking up your shit all the time picking up your shit and having to deal with it and get rid of it while they're doing a myriad other things keeping their own lives on track you know if your family people and you know your partner might be having to juggle all the family school commitments for the kids make sure they're happy healthy fed and if you're just totally wasted well not only is the, your partner having to do all that but they're also having to pick up your shit and pick up your, the pieces and uh, don't get me wrong I'm not having to go at anybody who's struggling with alcohol issues here today they're just, they're just so complex and far, far reaching you know I spent many a time as a youngster passed out uh, rotten drunk wouldn't know where I was what I've been doing sorry for spinning round I'm just untangling myself from Buster yeah I'd wake up in a hedge I'd wake up spark out anywhere covered in puke or piss whatever uh, so I do know about alcohol I also know that I used to joke that heroin actually saved my life only because that's what ultimately stopped me drinking initially when it was way out of control when I was younger and yeah I lost 24 years to heroin crack and methadone then but I tell you what the alcohol wouldn't have I wouldn't have lasted 24 years if I hadn't got into them that's how bad alcohol can be my drinking was so bad although I joked that heroin saved my life I'm actually convinced of it being a heroin addict for 24 years with all its hell and torment both for me and my family and the friends actually prolonged my life I'm convinced of I'm 53 now my father was an alcoholic as a young man and uh, cleverly he didn't get into heroin but I did well he died from his alcohol alcoholism age 46 so it just puts in perspective how bad alcohol can be when somebody like myself who's uh, had major run-ins both with alcohol and heroin and crack and all that can actually say that he's outlasted his dad probably because he was a heroin addict which got him off the drink I just hope that underlines for you viewers anybody struggling just how bad and serious and toxic and nasty alcohol can be when it gets out of control it's fucking awful it destroys lives it destroys relationships it destroys families on a daily basis and remember I'm only do I'm not doing this video out of the blue randomly picking a topic for a vlog 
I'm doing this video to uh, address some of my friends who've reached out to me, which is brilliant that they've reached out to me and confided in me. But that's why I'm doing it, because some of my friends are having issues with alcohol right now. Um, I can only surmise that a lot of people, including myself, you know, most people, they have ups and downs in life. And what goes on in your childhood is, is pivotal. So my father being an alcoholic and my mum uh, divorcing him in the early 70s when I was a babby, when women didn't really divorce their husbands then. And then all the fallout from that divorce and the psychological impact that I'd already had on my mother, who then had to go on to bring us all up. Uh, yeah, that impacted me massively. So it is like a cycle. Um, yeah. And um, so when, when you're having your alcohol struggles and that, first thing I'd like you to take from this video is to sit and think for two minutes. Who, who is your alcoholism affecting? Who is your alcoholism affecting? Are you married? Have you got a partner? It's obviously going to be affecting them. Have you got kids? Or a job where people rely on you? It's obviously going to affect you. your children or your work commitments. It has a massive effect when the drink gets out of control. Oh, who can fix it and what can you do to help yourself? The only real way you're going to help yourself is to hit rock bottom. That's my, my own um, take on it. Rock bottom. When you've woke up in a ditch covered in puke for the hundredth time and you, you climb out the ditch and you see that you've wrecked your car and you've spent all your wife's housekeeping money and so you've took the food off your children for that week, wrote your car off, your missus hates you. That might be rock bottom for you, might be. But uh, it does take hitting rock bottom, it does. Uh, but just be mindful, what, what, while you're not hitting that rock bottom, and even if you're reaching out and that, it's a good sign that you're reaching out. But in reaching out, you need to try and avoid. You need to try and avoid hitting rock bottom. If you've already reached out, then you've had uh, a wake up moment. You've obviously been fed up of uh, messing up too many times. You can avoid hitting rock bottom. If that light bulb just goes off in your head, you're gonna lose your children. You're going to lose your job, you're going to lose your house, you're going to lose your wife, your girlfriend, or vice versa, your husband or your boyfriend, you know? Um, yeah, and you, you'll die old and lonely, and uh, or not even old, but al alone. You'll die probably too early, you'll die alone, like my father did. I never ever knew the man. His name was a swear word in our house when I was growing up. So think about that. If you've got kids and you're drinking and it's getting out of control. If you split up with your partner, do you want your name to be likened to like a swear word in the house that your children live in? Do you want your ex-partner to say your name? Like, like she's saying the worst possible swear word because of all the all the damage that your alcoholism has done because so that's what I grew up with I grew up with all that I grew up with plotting to uh, kill my father because of all the abuse that he'd unleashed on my mother um, I used to plot with my older brother if we ever bumped into him how we could kill him so if you're a dad, you know, is this what you want to unleash on the next generation? I'm sure you don't. You don't want to unleash that. Not when you're sober and you're happy and you're buzzing along. But you need to uh, think about all this. 
when you're getting itchy fingers and wanting to reach out for the bottle. Uh, you know, there are, there are medications, I think, that can help you stop drinking. I'm not overly familiar with them. But any medications you've got to stick to. You've got to stick to your medications properly and not fucking jog on with them and mess about. Same with things like antidepressants. If you're on some and you think they're helping you, don't don't lapse and don't take them. Or don't don't lapse and then take some to catch up because they don't work like that. Just keep steady on your medication and keep working towards your goal. And keep in mind that you don't want your name to be a swear word in, in, in the generation that you've given born to, like like my father's was. So it's a bit heavy, it's a bit hard hitting, but I'm worried about a few of my friends. And uh, I broke the cycle in the sense that, I didn't break the cycle in the sense that I didn't drink and then didn't take drugs because I did drink and I didn't take drugs. So I didn't break the cycle initially that way. My way of breaking the cycle was I didn't have children. I consciously, purposely, made a decision not to have children because I didn't want to spin that cycle out on them. I didn't want my name to become a swear word. I knew I was dysfunctional. Luckily, I've, luckily I have um, survived my dysfunctionality up to this point. I have a couple of cans most evenings. I don't take any Class A drugs anymore. Even when we lost poor Rachel, it didn't drive me back to the drugs. And when uh, we did lose her, um, I had about a shop and trolley's worth of uh, heroin type drugs, opiates, all in the kitchen, all stuff that Rach was too poorly, she didn't get round to taking them. And bear in mind my past drug addiction and my battle, well, even losing my wife, it didn't, it didn't, uh, drive me back into taking them drugs so it can be done viewers it can you just got to either hit rock bottom and be honest with yourself or take a long hard look at yourself especially if you're a family man do you want your name to be dog shit with your own children because my father's name was worse than dog shit it was the worst swear word anybody could ever say in our house so think about it, viewers. I'm sorry that this isn't uh, a bright, breezy, Anglo-Celtic vlog or boggle, but I thought I needed to make this hard-hitting one because some of my friends are struggling right now. And I wish you all the best of luck in the world. And you can turn things round into a lovely, bright future, an absolute golden future. You've just got to realise that. Right. I've had to sort more of Buster's shit out. I guess life's got a lot to do with sorting shit out. You've just got to make sure that it's not other people always sorting your shit out. I would like to also touch on something I just mentioned. Um, Buster's my son. And Tilly's my daughter. So yeah, I, I mentioned I chose to break the cycle, what was going on in my family, by not having kids, because I already knew by the time I was thinking like that, I was fucked up. I was a right li liability. I would take all kinds of drinking drugs at a young age, from the age of 12. And that was probably my way of processing all the shit that we'd had to deal with. So I didn't have any kids. Uh, I'm at the age 53 now, where I really, really wish I did have children. I think I'd be a good father, a good role model. Well, no matter how much you messed up on the drink or whatever at the minute, and you're having problems, if you've got children, it's never too late. You've fucking got to grab yourself by the fucking balls, though. Give yourself a right fucking talking to. Hit rock bottom, but it's best to hit rock bottom in your mind. Just imagine how it's all going to extrapolate rather than literally hit rock bottom in that ditch.
covered in puke and blood and regrets. So yeah, bit heavy hitting today, but needed. I want my friends to help themselves. And if I can help them do that, I will. All right, Bobo, all right, all right. Let's just drop this sack of shit in there. Just pretend that's your alcohol abuse habit, viewers, if you're going through it. Sort your shit out. Don't end up in one of these age 36, 46, being remembered as a swear word. Don't do it, viewers, who are struggling. Sort your shit out. It's all you have to do. I know it's not easy, but if you want it enough, it soon happens. It soon happens, viewers. Uh, another thing that I forgot to mention that massively helped me get off the uh, crack heroin and methadone after 24 years was dipping my toe back into metal detecting. Metal detecting is a wonderful hobby. It boggles the mind. It delivers massive highs and lows, just like drugs. It's a lot like being on drugs and it does get addictive. And you hear of people often uh, replacing one addiction like drink with drugs. Well, if you're going to do it, replace your demons with metal detecting at least. Because at least you'll be getting plenty of exercise. You'll be finding cool stuff when you're not finding absolute bullshit and whiskey bottle tops. Maybe your own rusty whiskey bottle tops if you turn it all around, viewers. Um, yeah, metal detecting, it's a massively, massive great thing. It encompasses loads of things. It encompasses loads of people, nice people that you can have in your life. And it doesn't always have to be metal detecting. If you can just get some positive hobbies and interests and focuses, then you're always going to be doing positive things and you're going to be spending your time around positive people. And those positive people that you get to know, who you might go on to greatly admire, no doubt a lot of them will have their own stories. A lot of them will have their own stories, just like I have. So yeah, metal detecting. Grab it with both hands and stick at it. If you're already into it watching my channel, but you're having a problem with drink and drugs or whatever, keep tight hold of metal detecting and the people that it'll bring into your life. That massively helped me turn my life around, viewers. With that, although it's been a heavy hitting uh, video today, I'll leave you with a smile. Hello guys. My name is Tsetso. Not like one of my friends calling me Keko all the time. Right? I saw him yesterday for a bit. We had a coffee and nice chat. In the same time, he's given me one piece of paper, like a sticker, he says. He says, you can stick that anywhere you want, mate. I just get in, put it in my pocket. Later on, when I come home, I decide, without I know what is it on that sticker, it can be anything. I decide to stick it on my metal detector. There it is. It's on my metal detector now. In the time I was sticking that sticker to my metal detector, I reading Anglo Celtic. Then I remember that the same person have a metal detecting YouTube channel and it calls Anglo Celtic. Digging all day rubbish guys. So I feel so sorry for that person. I don't know how big luck that sign gonna bring bring me in the hobby, but if not, I will take him. I sorry about that, but I have to.